If you want to learn more about the Nikon 24 to 120 zoom lens and come along for an awesome photo adventure, then stay tuned. This video is for you. Thanks again to my friends at Robert's Camera for letting me use this awesome Nikon 24 to 120 zoom lens. Now, something about this lens right here, one, I've never shot with it before. Two, I've paired this with the trusty Nikon D3400 body right here. Now, it's a nothing special body, but I continue to shoot with it because I want everyone to understand that you can take great photos even with what's considered to be an entry-level body. It's not so much about the equipment as it is about the photographer and the photographer's ability to leverage the knowledge and the experience that they have to capture those images. Now, this lens right here, it feels kind of heavy to be honest, but that's for good reason because this lens is really meant for a full sensor camera, but obviously it can work on the crop sensors right here. They typically couple this lens with the full sensor kits that they offer up. Now I'm really looking forward to getting out and shooting with this lens and seeing what this thing can do. Now it's an f4 all the way through and that means when you're zoomed all the way out at 120 you can open that aperture all the way to f4 and obviously when you're back at 24 you can open to f4 as well. So I'm going to give you a game plan like I do with my other videos. Now every shot I'm going to take I'm going to shoot in raw. And I'm going to do a little bit of post-processing in Lightroom because you have to, to get it to JPEG so I can show it in the videos. I'm going to have all that metadata in the upper left-hand corner. That way it'll tell you what settings the camera had when it captured that image. We're going to have a lot of fun doing that. Now, it's kind of late in the day, and you might be saying, where are you at? Well, again, I'm in the great state of Kentucky. And I'm in the great place of Red River Gorge. Now, I just like it down here. I've been down here a few times now and have done some other videos. I'm going to hike around some more down here. Now, what else is special about today? Well, I have someone very special with me. And that is my daughter. Yeah, she wanted to come along. So I wanted to take this opportunity and really enjoy this time with her. Grab my camera, come down here, have a lot of fun. So you're going to get to see her in some of this video, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, there is one other thing. In one of my previous videos, someone spotted the fact that I had this old kind of rickety tent. Now, I've had that tent for around 20 years, and it's been falling apart. So someone decided to send me a tent, and it was a place called the Night Cat. Now, I don't know anything about this tent. It just got to me last night. I grabbed it on the way out the door. Haven't had a chance to set it up yet. So I'm going to do that in the video as well. It's supposed to be a quick setup. So we'll see just how quick it is and hopefully have some fun with that. Now, we're going to camp out and I'm going to try to find a really cool place to do that. So maybe we're going to take some night shots. We'll see what that's all about. And then we're going to hike around tomorrow, grab a lot more shots right here. And then I'm going to finish up with a few final thoughts. So with all that said, let's jump in and have some fun. Especially when it came from nothing I don't want to sail Across the sea that's only controlled by I don't want to be a soldier Band or control holder I just want to shine Brighter than your sky So read 
So what went wrong? Well, you can see the tent behind me here, my daughter off to the side, and we got a little fire going. So you'll notice that this tent is not in the same location as the last clip, and it's the next morning. So I'm gonna take you through what went wrong. Now, typically when I create these videos, I always advocate safety, and I probably could have used a little bit of my own advice last night. So when we set the tent up, the sun had just went down, so it was dark, but we had to go back and grab additional provisions. And so we started to boulder down, and by this point, it is mostly dark. Now, I was in the lead, and I'm going to cut away real quick and kind of show you um, where all this went down. So you can see, as I'm coming back, there's a flat ledge right here. And I went to put my foot by this tree that you can see off to the right. And uh, it looked stable at the time, although it was dark, and I couldn't quite see everything around it. And when I put my foot on that, that tree uh, just gave way. You know, the, the root of the tree gave way, everything gave way, and I started to fall. Now, I remember the tree being there, so I reached out with my right arm. And when I did that, um, you know, I just pulled the tree down. Uh, the root came up, but you can see it's still attached. Now, I fell all the way down to the bottom there. And uh, fortunately, I landed on another tree, and there were some other blessings that took place. So I had my Teton uh, Explorer 4000 pack on, and I didn't have anything in it because I just unloaded gear to go back and grab more. And that pack is fully padded on the back side. I also had my Swiss backpack, which I use for just daily hikes. That's padded as well. So when I started to fall and land on this tree down here, um, it helped to break my fall. Uh, the only thing that was really hurting on me was my elbow, and it just felt like I banged it up pretty good. So um, I tried to assess it. I, I noticed it was kind of bleeding through my compression top, but uh, we made our way back to the vehicle where I could take my top off and take a closer look at it, and it was gouged pretty good. Um, at that time, we decided to just put some Band-Aids on it and then go back and take everything off that rock face because camping out there is uh, it's dangerous. It's probably not the best idea. And so um, I had to be very careful when I went back to shut everything down. We got back to the vehicle and uh, we knew that this spot was down the road a little ways. And this is where we set up. Um, and this is much, much safer. And so if you camp out, uh, this is really kind of what you want to do here. Now back here is the night cat tent that I mentioned before. And it's a really quick setup. You know, I, I think you saw that in the video. It went up really nice and easy. However, one funny issue here is that that tent collapsed on us in the middle of the night. Now in part, it was our own fault because we didn't have it staked down. So um, other than that, the tent has worked out well. Now also getting that fire going last night, it had rained a couple of nights ago, so the wood was kind of damp. It took a while to get that going, but we finally got it there. And it got down the 30s last night, so it was relatively cold, right? But um, we still have some fun. Now, we're going to go ahead and break this camp down, and then we're going to hike around some more, take some more shots, and have some fun. So with that said, let's just jump right back in. Of what it means to be complete Trying to find direction While pondering defeat Looking for potential but they're never gonna measure up To the woman I've been building up In my head The more I see The less I know Well, that was a relatively quick video compared to all the other equipment reviews that I have done, but that's okay. I really enjoyed getting out there and capturing some of those images, and most importantly, I enjoyed spending time with my daughter. Now, I've taken that fall, and I've healed up since. It's been two weeks since I took that adventure, and I can tell you I've got a nice little scar on my elbow to remember that occasion by, and that's okay. I've also returned that 24 to 120 zoom lens to Robert's camera, and again, I thank them for letting me borrow that lens. 
Now I've just put the 18 to 55 back on the body here. So what are my final thoughts about that lens? Well, again, I really like that lens. I think the resulting images were tack sharp. I didn't have any issues with that. It's just that the lens is relatively heavy compared to the other zoom lenses that I've recently reviewed. However, I will say that if you're not certain if you're going to stay with a crop sensor body and you're considering that at some point in the future you may upgrade, this might be a great lens to consider because it can work on both the crop and the full sensors. The same can't be said for some of the recent lenses that I've reviewed, like that 18-140 to or the 18-200 to or the 18-300 to or even the Tamron 18-400. to So, you know, would I get this lens? Well, again, if I'm thinking I'm going to upgrade, I would strongly consider it. If I don't have any plans of upgrading, eh, I'd stay with one of the other lenses that I've reviewed recently. And again, check the description below because I'm going to post links to those lenses. If this video has helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.